In my series of presentations called The Journey to Nicaea, one of the points that I made in the first presentation was that in the second century of the Christian era, there was no Bible. For the very earliest Christians, the scriptures had meant the Jewish scriptures, the Torah, the prophets, the writings. And in the second century and in the first century as well, many, many Christian scriptures began to appear. So we know of four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but there were many, many other gospels. Uh, the gospel of Thomas, the gospel of Judas, the gospel of Mary Magdalene, to name just three. There were many other epistles, not just the epistles of Paul or the letters of John and Peter and James. There were many acts, not just the acts of the apostles. The fragment that you see in the image before you is from one of those acts. It's called the Acts of Paul and Thecla. We know about the book of Revelation in our Bible, but there were many other books of Revelation. It is estimated by one scholar that we have probably only 15% of all the scriptures that were floating around in the early church. What was the result of this? Well, different Christian communities would use different scriptures. Not everybody used the same scriptures. What that resulted in was uh, a great diversity of beliefs among different Christian communities, as you can imagine. They were in different cities, they were in different countries, and so they were exposed to different cultures. And each culture filtered their own scriptures through the lenses of their own uh, beliefs uh, and their own uh, understanding of Jesus and Christianity. So in the second century, there was no clear idea of what it meant to be a Christian. The next two plus centuries would see a resolution of these various questions at the Council of Nicaea and its follow-up, the Council of Constantinople. And the Nicene Creed, which was produced by those councils, at least was an attempt to formalize and unify the Christian belief system.